afternoon uh, good evening depending on where you are tuning from uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, uh, this is a uh, part arena mambo so very unusual to be having this uh, show during uh, the week uh, uh, you know it's always on weekend but uh, there is something special happening and uh, we had to do this uh, uh, early this morning my apologies uh, to our viewers and listeners uh, here in the USA and Canada because I know it's uh, too early uh, but uh, this was the time that was available and uh for that i will say we are going to uh, publish this rerun this uh later on during the day right high right here on zim i uh, so let me take uh, this opportunity as well to welcome our viewers rather our listeners on uh, change radio i know we are live uh, on zim i youtube zim i facebook page uh, and also on uh, change radio facebook page thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, uh, this is a special, very special edition, President Chamisa's film premiering in New York uh, this weekend. Uh, and today we have uh, uh, the brains behind uh, this uh, award-winning documentary. Uh, Kamina, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, please take a few minutes uh, to greet our viewers and listeners across the world. Well, thank you so much for, for having me on the, the show today. Yes, indeed, it's a uh... Exciting weekend coming up uh, on Friday the 17th, the uh, film about the 2018 presidential election in Zimbabwe is opening in theaters in the United States, first in New York and LA. Um, and depending on the numbers and, and the, the demand, we'll see where it takes us. But that's our starting points uh, opening this weekend. Wow, wow, wow. This is uh, magnificent. Uh, Zimbabweans. Uh, good news uh, coming from America, coming from the USA. Uh, the film is uh, premiering uh, right here uh, in the USA. Uh, please, uh, let's share this video so that as many people as possible get to know about uh, President. But of course, uh, before we talk about uh, President, the documentary, and also as we go about President Chamisa, the person, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, Camila. Who is uh, Camila? A lot of people... Uh, you know, you have just heard about this documentary, but they don't know the person who did it. Uh, just uh, tell us, tell Zimbabweans, tell the world, uh, who is uh, Camila Nelson? Um, well, I was I was fortunate enough to, to make uh, my first film in Zimbabwe about 10 years ago. And maybe some of our listeners and viewers are, are familiar with that film. It's called Democrats. And it followed the constitution-making process that took place in Zimbabwe between 2010 and 2013. Um, that was a, a documentary like, like President, and um, it was uh, screening around the world uh, in, 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 you know, having a very nice reception. Unfortunately, the film was banned in Zimbabwe uh, when we tried to release it and get a distribution certificate. Uh, and that led us to test that ban in the Zimbabwean court system. Um, it was a two and a half year process. Uh, and, uh, and after, I think it was 2018, after the, the coup, 
that ousted former President Mugabe, we finally had a Zimbabwean uh, judge in the High Court release our film. Um, and that's basically my story with Zimbabwe. That court case led for, for me to stay in contact with, with the, the people I'd met during the filming of my first film. And that led to the making of the second film, uh, the one that's premiering next weekend. The title is President. And it's basically a film that follows uh, the election through the campaign of Nelson Chamisa, uh, from his campaigning in the rural areas until the Constitutional Court gives it final ruling in the beginning of September. Um, and it's been traveling around the world. We are hoping to release it in Zimbabwe soon. Uh, but first, uh, again, we are, we are trying to, to, to mobilize people to come to the theaters for, for the people who are based in, in the United States and catch a preview right there. Wow, wow, powerful, powerful. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kamina. Uh, I'm going to ask a question here that uh, a lot of people would be asking. Uh, of course, uh, they don't represent uh, my feelings, but uh, we just want to be clear as we go. A lot of people would ask, what's your interest uh, in uh, all this? Is it about money? Uh, is it a hobby to you? What is the need for you? Um, it's Well, it's certainly not the money. I, I, I can surely say I think we are still in, in the red uh, numbers with the first film, uh, Democrats, and we're 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 also not making money on on this one. It's it's a uh, documentary films uh, about crime stories or uh, animals, uh, National Geographic type of thing. Usually makes a lot of money, but but films about politics, um, especially uh, for an international audience, a film about an, a presidential election in Zimbabwe three years ago. It's not a big uh, sale, I have to say. But it doesn't matter. That's not the point. Uh, for me, I'm an observational filmmaker. Um, I came to Zimbabwe originally because I, I have a background in law and uh, anthropology. And I, I, I was invited to tell the story about the constitution making process. Um, I can tell you that's also not a big sell when you show the synopsis to commissioning editors that you want to make a film about somebody writing clauses for a new constitution. But my, my interest back then was about, uh, you know, it, for me, it was a very exciting moment in, in, in history. And it would be for me an exciting moment anywhere in, in, in the world that, that a country is trying to, re, to write a new constitution, a new found, a law of the land. Um, I'm from Denmark and we wrote our constitution hundreds of years ago. There are no notes, no recollections, no data, no stories about how those pieces of paper were put together, how those clauses and how those rights were, were decided upon. Uh, so, so, so the idea of, of documenting the, the constitution making process in Zimbabwe was, was an intriguing one. And then I think I became so infatuated and in awe and humbled by, 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 by the country and by the Zimbabwean people. Um, and I think that led me to, to tell a second story. But, but obviously, as a non-Zimbabwean, the focus is, is in this new film, not just about the election itself, but also um, uh, as a member of the international community, we, 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 we talk about the role of the international observers that came to Zimbabwe to observe the election there uh, and whether they failed or not. Um, and I won't spoil the plot here. I think you as Zimbabweans know the story. But, uh, but I'd like you to see, see for yourself when you watch the movie. Yes, uh, Zimbabweans, uh, you got to watch uh, this uh, movie. Uh, so get ready for it. Uh, if you are in New York, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, and uh, surrounding areas, uh, please, uh, if you haven't bought your ticket, uh, go online and uh, look for that ticket. And uh, we'll see you in New York uh, on Friday. Moving on, uh, Camila, let's uh, talk about... Uh, uh, the documentary. I, I, I saw the trailer, I have to be honest, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, how did you capture all those uh, uh, images, all those fantastic images, considering the political environment in Zimbabwe? I mean, you have been in Zimbabwe for 14 years, uh, and uh, you, you met Robert Mugabe, right, at one time? And, uh, a few times. Uh, a few times. <laughs> I think I'll come back to, to, to that. I would want to uh, hear your experiences. Maybe you can just uh, infuse uh, that uh, here. And then uh, now we have uh, Emerson Munangagwa, who, when he came into power, he promised the world uh, uh, that uh, he was going to change things, do things differently, uh, bring back a uh, rule of law. 
uh, and allow for free, fair, and uh, credible elections. Uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, you know, people are still being abused, including journalists. How did you manage to, to break through and come up with all those uh, uh, good images, ca capture things as they were happening? Mm. Well, the, the good images uh, I owe to my wonderful cameraman, Henrik Ibsen, who has worked with me in Zimbabwe for the last 10 years. He also filmed Democrats uh, together with me. Uh, and he's a wonderful photographer and, 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 uh, and, uh, and we work very well together. I, do, I direct the movie, but I also do sound. So uh, some Zimbabweans will probably have seen me in Harare running around with a big boomstick and recording sound for, for, for the films. <laughs> Um, also, I think uh, kudos to Nelson Chamisa and his team for trusting us completely to tell the story about the election. I mean, um, of course, there were rules about what we could film and, and there were also things that were off camera uh, that were too sensitive to, to share with the world for, for strategic purposes. But, but I would say it was by and large a very trusting uh, presidential candidate. Uh, who allowed us for great transparency to, to basically follow the, 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 the campaign behind the scenes. So, so we are thankful for his trust in us. And also, I think to a large group of, of Zimbabweans, um, I think we've created a huge network on the ground in Zimbabwe over the past 12 years, uh, who worked with us on, on the first movie, Democrats, and who continue to work with us on, on president. Uh, and it takes a village to make this kind of movie uh, and, and everybody has, has, has helped out and chipped in and, 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 uh, and um, I would say taken risk also because, you know, the situation is obviously, as you say, it's, it's a, sometimes a volatile or a difficult climate to deal with Zimbabwean politics. And, and, and my and Henrik's privilege is that once we are done filming, we can, we can jump on a plane with our footage and, and edit the film uh, outside the borders of Zimbabwe. But as you mentioned, the, the, the you know, Zimbabwean journalists are often facing very, very rough handling for, for, for having dissenting voices or, or cri even criticizing the, 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 the ruling party or the current government. Um, so I think in a way that, that that's what made this whole process um, and, and filmmaking uh, adventure possible. So I, we are thankful to a lot of people who are anonymous uh, for their safety at, at, the, at this point. As so will you see the, the credits of the film, uh, but they know who they are. And, uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank everybody who, uh, who were involved in these two projects. Wow, wow. Lovely, lovely. We would like to thank all those who contributed, uh, uh, you know, to this wonderful award-winning uh, documentary. Um, and uh, Camila, having lived in Zimbabwe for 14 years, uh, I'm sure obviously you, you now know, you know the culture of uh, Zimbabwe and the kind of people that uh, Zimbabweans are, you know, looking at how Zimbabweans have been treated by uh, Robert Mugabe first and then now Emerson Mnangagwa and um, also noticing, I'm sure you did notice, that uh, Zimbabweans love their president. They love uh, president Chamisa. If you had a chance to meet uh, the president uh, and uh, what's your uh, impression on him? Which one? Uh, the, which president? The people's president or the, the people's president? The people's president. <laughs> yeah, okay. and then you can also come in and talk about uh, uh, ZANU PF presidents, uh, sure. Emerson Mnangagwa and uh, uh, Robert Mugabe. Yes, sure. I, I obviously I, I met uh, Nelson, President Nelson Chamisa every day during the, the constitution the, during the, the, the election process when we were filming. We started filming on July first, I think, and we stayed in Zimbabwe for for twelve weeks until the constitutional court had done its ruling. So, so yes, I met him many times, and we are obviously still in contact. Uh, um, I've he's seen the film before we released it. I wanted to make sure that, that there was nothing in there that I had either misinterpreted or that put anybody unnecessarily at risk uh, in, in the film. I wanted to clear that. Um, and he had no changes. Uh, so, 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 so it's still, it's, it's our edit, it's my decisions as a, as a filmmaker, what's in the film, but given the sensitivity uh, everybody who, who's saying something in the film has had an opportunity to, to watch the rough cut and approve of it before we released it at the Sundance Film Festival in the beginning of this year. 
Um, and also, I, 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 uh, I let him know when big events happen. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago, we were uh, uh, nominated for the big Gotham Awards in uh, New York City, where we had a, a beautiful event with our executive producer on the film. I should mention Tandiva Newton, who might be familiar to many of you, a wonderful actress uh, who has Zimbabwe roots, who is, her mother is Zimbabwean. Um, is, is also helping us getting the movie out um, and we spoke then and he wished us congratulations on, on the nomination and so forth. So yes, uh, we, we, we are still in contact um, and, uh, and my big wish is obviously that, that uh, not just the people in the film, the Zimbabweans who are featured in the film, but that all Zimbabweans will very soon have a movie to, to watch this film uh, at home in Zimbabwe. Wow, powerful. Do you think, um, what are the chances of uh, uh, you being able to uh, get this out and, uh, you know, allow Zimbabweans to see it right in Zimbabwe? I mean, looking at what happened to, to uh, the other uh, documentary, the Democrats that you produced, do you think uh, Emerson Nangago is going to allow you to uh, get this out in Zimbabwe? Well, I, honestly, I can't speculate as to 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 to, to Munangakwa's, uh, uh, and I'm sure it's his team, his Ministry of Information and his censorship board that will deal with the movie directly, not himself. Um, I would like for him to see it, obviously, but 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 uh, I'm not going to make speculation in advance whether the the film will be um, uh, released with a, and we will be giving a distribution certificate on or not will apply through the proper rule, uh, legal rules. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, although Mugabe banned my first film, Democrats, <clears throat> uh, it, it, you know, Munangakwa has declared that this is a new dispensation and it's different times. So I, I would hope that he keeps his word and will look at this film as just one voice in the sea of voices about what happened at the, the presidential election. I mean, we don't necessarily have to agree in a democracy about everything. We can have divergent, uh, diverging opinions. And, and so even if, if the ruling party or uh, the censorship board does not agree with the point of view taken in this film, I would still hope that it would be allowed to screen it in public and for the people to judge for themselves. Um, I don't think that's the role of a censorship board in a, in a true democracy to, 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 to do like what happened with Democrats under the rule of Mugabe. Basically, the censorship board deemed that film not suitable for showing to the public. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, I hope it's not going to happen again. But we are in the process of, of making this happen and I won't uh, jinx the outcome. We are, we are open and hopeful for, for positive feedback uh, on this new film. Well, 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 this is... Uh... A wonderful news. Uh, do, you, do you hope uh, to get this out maybe on uh, Netflix and other uh, channels? Well, uh, the, the procedure with this, this kind of film is that first it, it does various film festivals around the world, and we've been doing that. Um, uh, we've been also screening, I should say, in, in South Africa and in, in, in Zambia and in neighboring countries. Uh, and once the film has run through its festival run, uh, it will go into theatrical release, usually. Right now, unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, that's a little bit difficult. I mean, in Denmark, where I'm from, we are in a semi-lockdown at the moment and probably moving into a full lockdown uh, over Christmas. Uh, in other countries, uh, Germany and, and other European countries, they're, we're facing uh, similar, very, very high infection rates at the moment. So cinema is a little bit difficult. Um, and after that, there will be uh, usually a television broadcast of a film like this. Uh, we will approach uh, ZBC, the national broadcaster in Zimbabwe, and ask if there would be an interest in screening the movie. Good luck with that. Uh, and, and, and if not, we, we will have to look into alternative distribution routes. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It will come to Zimbabwe one way or the other. I, I am pretty sure of that. Wow, this is good news. Uh, Zimbabweans across the world, uh, you are uh, hearing it from the horse's mouth. Uh, we are speaking uh, today or tonight or this afternoon to Camilla uh, Nelson, uh, the brains behind the president. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Camilla. We're going to take a short break here. Uh, but before we do that, uh, uh, can you just tell us uh, where this uh, film is uh, running uh, right now, especially here in the USA? 
Yes, on Friday uh, evening, on the 17th of December, we have a premiere or an opening night in two US cities. Firstly, in New York, on Manhattan, in a cinema there called the Film Forum. Um, there will be, on the opening weekend, various Q&As with Zimbabwe experts and, and, uh, and, and, and scholars and people uh, who are coming to, to, to discuss this film at the opening uh, with the audience. And then it will run for a week at least. And if we have high visitation numbers, if we sell a lot of tickets, I think there's an opening that it could stay in the theater over Christmas. Similarly, the film is opening in LA at the La Eme Monica Film Center. Also opening night on Friday 7, the 17th, uh, two uh, uh, Q&As I think on the Friday and the Saturday, and then it will run for a full week. Uh, at least in LA, depending on the, the, the numbers of, of tickets sold. But um, we hope many will come, uh, and because this could also open up for the film opening up in, in other larger cities. I've uh, been told that there are big diaspora communities in, in Texas, in Dallas, and in Atlanta. And so uh, we're working on if we can arrange additional screenings in, in cities where there is already a big uh, Zimbabwean community. It would be wonderful to reach uh, these communities the best we can after New Year. So that's the plan for now. And then starts the whole t television. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, it's uh, I can't sort of share all the television airing dates, but stay tuned for, 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 for January and February. There'll be some big news about airing dates on major television state uh, networks, both here in Europe and in, in Africa. Um, but those dates are not confirmed, so so I'll I'll get back to you and we'll share that information when we have it. Wow! Thank you very much uh, for that. As we get ready now to uh, take a short break, and then um, uh, we'll be able to see the trailer of uh, the award-winning documentary. Because I'm seeing some here, Dominic Machaka is actually asking, "What is the name of that movie?" <laughs> so you're gonna see the trailer right now, uh, Dominic, uh, as we. Uh, take a short uh, break and we'll come back uh, uh, after this. I know uh, we are tr still trying to get uh, the trailer out. Oh, there it is. This is an era of upsets, right? Donald Trump beating Hillary Clinton, Brexit in the UK. You defeating Emerson Mnangagwa, that would be an electoral upset on that kind of scale. Can you really see yourself pulling that off? Of course, I'm ready for it. I mean, I'm, I'm more than ready. I feel the energy. What is it? I'm here for a fight. We are ready for any consequence until we have a free and fair election in Zimbabwe. Change is coming. Change is coming. It cannot be denied. Those who believe in change, Today is a day of morning, morning of democracy. It is a black day. These guys are making Mugabe look like a sin. These are all shots. Links. Oma, we are at war. We are dealing with criminals. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sir, this is a democracy. This is a coup. It's a coup. Yeah, it's a coup. This is a coup. The assassination attempt was made only last week. Chamisa has survived so many assassination attempts. Mr. Chamisa, you are the hope for Zimbabwe. Please do not take that hope away from us.
Well, well, there you are, Zimbabweans. Uh, this is something that you can't afford to miss uh, if you are in surrounding areas uh, in uh, New York uh, City, uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, in Maryland, in Virginia, in Massachusetts, uh, in Philadelphia, uh, even uh, here where we are in North Dakota, you know, anywhere in the States, uh, this is your chance uh, to see your president, uh, the president, the documentary. Uh, please um, uh, find your way to New York uh, this weekend and be part of that. If you can't be in New York, uh, uh, try to be in Los Angeles, depending on where you are. And I think uh, you also heard Camila here saying it, uh, that uh, she is going to try and get this down to, you know, populous uh, places like Dallas, where we have a, you know, a large population of Zimbabweans, and then uh, Atlanta. I also recommended to hear about uh, Canada, Ontario. So uh, Canada, please uh, don't say you've been left out. Uh, uh, she is uh, talking to uh, people, and uh, I'm sure there will be a showing in Ontario as well. All right, now uh, moving on, uh, uh, Camila, we, we saw disturbing uh, pictures there, disturbing images in the, in the trailer mm. about uh, what's going on in Zimbabwe, especially August 1. You were there. Uh, personally, I was there. I've relived that moment, uh, you know, I was driving through uh, the streets of Harare, going to the other side of Harare through Samora Michelle Avenue, and I saw things happening. I saw, you know, soldiers going down, you know, on their knees and uh, opening fire on defenseless and armed, uh, harmless civilians. Can you try to relive at that moment uh, yourself? You know, if I talk about it myself, you know, I'm biased already. You know, you are a neutral. You know, you are coming in as a journalist, as a filmmaker. Relive at uh, that moment for us, please. Yeah, well, it was uh, a few days after the election and we were, me and my cameraman were actually uh, heading into the Rainbow Towers Hotel or the HICC in uh, downtown Harare where the international observer teams were about to have a uh, press conference. They were just like the opposition uh, election teams getting nervous about the delay in the broadcast of the results. Um, uh, and although, um, you know, we were still within the time frame given by the law, which is five days, there was some uh, strange uh, system going on in terms of how the, the, the various uh, election results were announced. And so the, the international journalists started to, to talk about this and to discuss the, uh, the, the, the independency of, of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. And that led the, uh, the international observer teams to decide to have a, a series of press conferences and, and explain their concern about why it would take so many days to count uh, these votes and, and various irregularities that were giving them concerns. And outside the hotel where the press conference took place, there was a gathering of some young opposition supporters who were angry, anxious, uh, about this being a repeat of history. Uh, I think in their mind, this was the uh, opportunity for Zimbabwe to break away from a history of controversial elections, I guess I can say, uh, with disputed results and have a clean slate and move into a new era. So there was a lot at stake, I think, for, for, for the young people and for all Zimbabweans in, in, in this particular election. And so when, when SEC were delaying or were, were at least um, I should say perhaps more diplomatically uh, hesitating to release the results, uh, there was some tension. And, and, uh, and that tension and demonstration outside the, the, the HICC led to somebody lighting a fire. It shouldn't have been done, obviously, but it wasn't, I would say, you know, how it was portrayed in, on, on ZBC, a huge, massive uprising of young people getting violent. I think that incident before, in front of the gate could have been handled by the 200 riot clad police who were standing there anyway. If they had walked through the gate, put out the fire, asked people to spread, I'm sure what happened on, on August 1st wouldn't have happened. But instead, as you see in our film, they started shooting water cannons, throwing tear gas, I think, and using unnecessary and excessive force. And I'm not, I think I'm not just saying this as an observer and an you know, independent filmmaker there, I think this was also highlighted in the commission that you know went through what happened on that terrible day. 
that there was use of excessive force by the military uh, in particular. And so from a, a, a small tension in front of the gate at the HICC, uh, it all kind of broke out in, 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 in what looked more like a war zone to me. Uh, in, in about 20 minutes, there were tanks in the street, there were helicopters in the air, there were live rounds being fired at civilians, including international journalists. Uh, nobody cared. And, and so the scene in the film, I should also say, uh, which is about a six minute scene that kind of reconstructs what happened in the streets of Harare on, on that terrible day, is, is compiled and edited from footage, not just filmed by, by me and my cameraman, because as soon as we felt the live bullets uh, around our head and we saw people you know, falling to the ground, bleeding, we realized that this was not just tear gas canisters popping, this was real ammunition and, and, and people were dying. So we basically hid behind a car uh, and then went back to our own car and, and stopped filming because it, it, was, it, was, it was too dangerous. So, so the scene you, you will see in the film um, is compiled of footage that has generously been shared to us from local Zimbabwean filmmakers and journalists and also a few uh, international crews who were there at the right time, at the right uh, moment, to document these atrocities. Um, and as many of us uh, have in our hearts today, sadly, six people perished on that day, and many more were wounded. And as I, as, I, as far as I know, nobody has been compensated, the government has not apologized, and I think it all kind of died down with a muddy report from the Modlanda Commission, which didn't really you know, do much justice, I think, to this. So the hope is also, besides telling the story about the election for us, is that these atrocities will, will become, you know, into the eye of the public and also into the eye of the international community, who I dare say, and this might be a controversial statement, but as a as a non-Zimbabwean, I think the, Zimbab the international community has let Zimbabwe down big time. Uh, something uh, happened. Uh, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Yeah, sorry, it was an incoming call. Um, oh. Yeah, so, 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 so I think there's also some, some stuff to be talked about in terms of who gave the order to uh, uh, have the, the military go into the streets the way they did, who gave the order to, to shoot live ammunition on civilians. I, I hope our film can raise awareness about this point. And also, I think, um, like I was saying, my, my, I really feel that the international community let Zimbabweans and let Zimbabwe down again in this election. They came in numbers. I think there were international observers from, from, from you know, all over the world, 40 teams. They stayed for a week. Uh, and when things got muddy, there was no clear, was this a free and fair election or not? I think we're still awaiting the answer. I think the answer from the EU Commission was it was better than previously, but 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 for me that's not a, you know, a, a good enough. And I think also, uh, you know, other various election teams um, did not come out and declare whether this was a free or fair election. At least it was a very muddy answer that left this in a kind of, you know, worrisome situation. So 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 I feel that this movie should also enlighten how we engage as an international community in election environments like the Zimbabweans. Are we doing a good job uh, by coming for a week and, and giving muddy answers? Or should we rather stay away if we are not willing to dig deeper um, and, and, and face you know, what happened uh, head on? Because in, in, in a sense, by coming and doing a, a superficial job, we are in a way as an international community helping to legitimize an election with a, instead of scrutinizing it. And I think that's that's not a good situation. So that's another aim of, of, of this film, is to highlight the role of the international community in this election and ask the question if we could do better next time. Um, and I'll leave that up to the audience itself. So do you, do you think, uh, in your own personal opinion, do you think uh, the international community uh, and the regional community is letting down Zimbabweans? Because there are some people that say uh, Zimbabweans should uh, fight their own uh, battles, they should uh, solve their own uh, issues. Uh, but uh, we see Zanupi of getting a lot of help, getting a lot of support from China, Russia, and uh, the, the whole world at large, including the USA, they help Zimbabwe, they help uh, Zanupi in a way. Uh, so who is on the side of uh, Zimbabweans in this? 
is, just, mm. is it just you? <laughs> yeah, well, no, no. I think that's not for me to say. Actually, who should who should? I mean, I think I think it's a. Uh, I mean, ideally, it would be it would it would be you know Zimbabweans sorting their own problems. But I think the way the situation is right now politically, you know, it it can be very difficult to operate as a democrat within a dictatorship. You know, the people who holds the guns and the weapons, like we saw on August first, they'll have the final word. And 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 you can have all the democratic principles uh, uh, in the world, but it it won't uh, match up. To, to, to the means that SANU-PF has at hand, whether it's, you know, the, the Electoral Commission or the media uh, or the courts or however you want to put this, whether the international community should intervene, I think that's for the Zimbabweans to decide. I'm not a politician, I'm a filmmaker. I, I, I came to the election, I observed what happened through my lens, I put the story together as I saw it. And the rest I will leave up to the Zimbabweans themselves and the international audience of this film to, to make up their mind um, after they've seen the film. I think uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's not for me to, to say, but I will say, as I said before, if we come to Zimbabwe as international election observers, um, I think we need to dig deeper. I think we need to not just go to rallies and make notes of whether there were violence or not. I think the Zimbabwean system is so complex that you need uh, a lot of knowledge and, 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 and sort of uh, knowing how the system works mm. to be able to make uh, a, a proper statement about what went wrong and what went right. Um, and I, I think that the, the superficial approach from the international community is, is not helping because in fact, they are legitimizing a situation where they should be asking questions. I think that's as far as I will, I will go in answering this question um, and, and then I hope people will watch our documentary and, and, and make up their own mind. Yes, yes. I know we have gone o over time, but I'm going to uh, squeeze in two, three questions here. You know, we can't uh, finish this uh, discussion before I hear your comments about, because we are talking about the international community here and, uh, you know, make, making, bringing that awareness. Uh, in November, President Chamisa survived two assassination attacks. Yeah, you know, your comment on that, what should the regional community and the international community do? Do they, should they, should we wait until we have a lot of dead bodies uh, in Zimbabwe for them to come in and, uh, you know, arrest the situation? Yeah, I, I, I obviously I heard of, 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 I think there were two attempts on his life in the same week yes. or within a week. Um, and, 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 uh, and yeah, well, there were not, a, a, you know, a strong response from the international community condemning that at all um you know i my feeling is just from speaking with my my friends on the ground in zimbabwe that there's a sense that there was a lot of interest and a lot of hype around the military coup and the removal of mugabe within the international community a lot of uh governments western governments were applauding that uh and in the euphoria about the removal of mugabe um i think they were not, you know, people weren't thinking ahead. Uh, it, 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 it seemed like the system that Mugabe had created was not removed by the removal of, of him as, as president and is still very uh, deeply rooted in, in, in many of the, the Zimbabwean institutions. Um, and that needs to be fixed for there to be, you know, a true constitutional uh, democracy. Independence needs to be, to institution needs to be independent um, and, 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 and also you need to have an opposition that can move around the, the country without being killed. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody in the international community can, can disagree with that. I think, unfortunately, there are two things at play here. One, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, many countries and, 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 and politicians are, are, are very occupied with this situation in their home countries for, for, for good reason. Uh, and also, I think there was sort of a collective hope that the transition from the Mugabe era into a new era would happen through this presidential election in 18. And when it didn't happen, there was a lot of just kind of shaking, ru rushing the shoulders and, and jumping on the plane and, and go back home. And so, so my, my, my impression from friends and, and, and colleagues on the ground in Zimbabwe is that there is a sense of being forgotten, you know, that there was a lot of hype around the coup. And now there's silence and, and the opposition, main opposition leader, 
of the country can have two assassination attacks on his life in a week and nobody lifts an eye eyebrow in my part of the world. Um, and and, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate, but, but again, hopefully our film can help bring an awareness around uh, in, about the situation and, uh, and, and if uh, we push well and have a, have a lot of people see the movie and think about it, maybe initiatives can be taken before the 23 election and, and, and so that, that everybody works to, you know, not repeating what went wrong uh, three years ago. Wow, Learning wow. from mistakes, basically, yeah. Wow, thank you so much uh, for that. Um, uh, to those that are just uh, joining us, uh, we are talking to Camila Nelson here, the uh, director of uh, the film or the brains behind uh, the film, the award-winning film, The President. Uh, the President, to those who don't know, it talks about uh, uh, President Chamisa and uh, the 2018 elections, how it was rigged, how it was stolen in broad daylight. Uh, we are getting towards uh, the end here, those who are just joining us, and I know you can always uh, come back and uh, watch this. Uh, Camila, I can't uh, finish this uh, uh, quest, this uh, interview again without talking about um, some of uh, one of the persons that has been behind uh, Zimbabwe, standing behind Zimbabwe, uh, a, a young lady, uh, I think you mentioned uh, Tandiwe Newton. You know, just uh, tell us about your relationship uh, with her and uh, how she is. Uh, you know, been part of uh, the struggle for Zimbabwe and also contributed to this um, award-winning documentary. Mm. Well, uh, Tendiva Newton has been a human rights activist and, and fought for women's rights uh, for, for, for two decades. Um, and she became aware of the film uh, at the Sundance uh, Film Festival after its premiere. And we were introduced by a, a common friend um, and basically, from that time off, we sort of hit it off, and, and she, 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 she liked the film, and she said she would like to help to spread the message of the film uh, to, 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 to a global audience, which she has done so wonderfully since. Um, uh, she has a huge, you know, she's a very popular actress uh, and activist, and, and uh, she has a huge following, so obviously, uh, some uh, some uh, individual like me uh, behind the scenes can can you know get my, my 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 film out to the same degree that that she can so so and she speaks to the the matters of course with great authenticity being having a Zimbabwean mother and, and knowing the Zimbabwean situation in in depth so we're very happy to have her as our executive producer of the film. Um, uh, if anyone is interested to reading a, more about her involvement in President, there are several interviews that she's given with The Hollywood Reporter and other uh, magazines and journalists online for, 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 for if, if there's further interest. And, uh, and um, yes, yeah, she's just been really wonderful, wonderful experience for, for me to, to meet her as a person. She's a wonderful person, but also uh, she can put this movie on the radar uh, in ways that, that we as a small Danish documentary film team could never do. Um, she was in, uh, she was with Trevor Noah at the Daily Show uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's still out there, I think, online for everyone to, to see. Um, you might even be able to post a chief if you want on your, your site. Maybe I can get you a yes. link where she also talks in depth about the, the film um and the Zimbabwean situation so so yes it's a wonderful collaboration with her we are honored to to have her on board the team wow wow well back to to the people we are here about uh, uh the people of Zimbabwe because of the people of Zimbabwe we have already established and we all know that uh the people of Zimbabwe love President Chamisa they're just crazy about uh their president how are you going to make uh, them crazy about uh uh, the president, the documentary, and how can we help as Zimbabweans? Well, uh, I think, you know, President Samisa uh, having the main part in this movie, it's, it's a film about him and his team and the election uh, in general, but obviously he's the main player in the movie being the, the, the candidate that, that we follow. Um, I may want to mention here as well that we actually did approach Munangagwa and his election team because we wanted it to be a balanced movie. Democrats, right. my first film, I filmed on both sides of the political divide, uh, both with Sanu PF and equally with, with, with the opposition. And we wanted to take the similar approach making this movie. 
to have a more balanced view of the situation. Um, but we, um, we we were not successful in, in getting the same kind of access with Murangagwa's campaign team as we did with Tamisa. Um, uh, and that's my regret, but it was, we, we approached them and it, it, it didn't work out. Um, um, but if we uh, we could have, that was definitely the intention. Um, well, Chemisa, as you say, you know, I, I didn't know him before we started filming. Uh, he was not part of the constitution making process in the first film. So I knew of him, but, and I think we'd met a few times at Harvest House, but I didn't know him uh, well. Um, and, and after uh, giving a, a short consideration, he agreed to, to, to be part of this uh, movie making uh, process. I think he's a young politician. I think he understands media very well and what it can do. Having been an ICT minister himself, I think in the in the in the, union, in the uh, government yes. uh, of national unity, um, and I think also perhaps because he'd seen Democrats, the first film we made, and uh, knew from other uh, sources that we were reasonably reliable and, and trustworthy <laughs> bunch of people, uh, he agreed that we could document his uh, his campaign and. So I only got to know him through filming him. Basically, uh, we did, I think, in the first two or three weeks of filming, uh, three rally a day in the rural communities, driving around uh, long distances uh, in the beautiful Zimbabwean landscape and meeting a, a lot of people. And although I don't speak Shona, uh, I understand a little bit, but I, I, I don't speak it. And I, there's a lot to be, be said about how little Shona I speak after working so many Yeah, you, you can say the that's one word that you know in Shona. But, 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 uh, nah, let's not go there. I think my, my point was that uh, even without understanding the language, I could see how, you know, we arrived in, an, in, a, in, a, in a stadium and it was cold and people had walked a long way and maybe, you know, really should be doing other things on that day to, to, to feed their kids and, and do their jobs. But the way he kind of, you know, almost like a Bill Clinton or a, a Barack Obama, can warm up an audience and, and speak in this kind of deep Shona language that 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 gets people, that gets people's hearts. And, and you could sort of, even if I don't speak the language, I could see how people started in this position and then loosened up more and more. And they kind of left the event with a, with a big smile. Um, and I know that he was ridiculed from many sources about his talk about spaghetti roads and, and, and bullet trains. Uh, but I think what he kind of succeeded to do, especially with the young uh, voter segment of, of the Zimbabwean population, was to, to generate a feeling of hope that we don't need to have, you know, bumpy roads with potholes for the next 40 years. There are ways to, to do things differently. Uh, you know, it's not just in Japan that you can have fast spe speed trains and stuff like that. I think he... You know, he was able to, 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 to generate a sense of, of hope and excitement in a community where there was, you know, probably a lot of voter apathy uh, going on. And I think that captured a spirit and, and a feeling in the country that's taken him to to where he is today. I think perhaps more, more you know, I don't know, but it's my you know, suspicion that he's not less popular now than he was when I filmed him in 2018. So, uh, so and I think as a film crew also, I can only commend the way he he was open about us filming, you know, even quite sensitive political meetings and, and decisions. There was a transparency there for us as a, as, a, as a crew that for me made me think, well, you know, this guy doesn't really have anything to hide because if you were, you know, you know, perhaps if I, if I went to the EU or went to even the Danish prime minister and said, I'd like to film you 24 seven during your next election campaign, I, I doubt I would have that kind of trust. So, so, so it was a good experience for us, and whatever we filmed over the three months, is, I think it was about 250 hours or almost 300 hours of footage, has now been compiled into a two-hour movie that is, you know, in, in essence, a crystallization of, of how we saw what unfolded in front of our cameras at the election three years ago. Wow. I wish I had spoken to you before I gave one of the interviews that I did uh, yesterday with the uh, VOA in another uh, online newspaper about uh, this film. Uh, this uh, journalist asked me that uh, the biggest criticism that uh, document, uh, the documentary is facing is that it's one-sided. It's just talking about uh, President Chamisa. It looks like uh, the director was already biased. So you've just uh, answered uh, them right now uh, that um, 
you know, you, you did approach Emerson Munangagwa and uh, they turned you down. That's, uh, that's uh, um, uh, very unfortunate. But anyway, as we uh, round up, uh, wind up, uh, Camila, are you not afraid to be taking on, you know, you know a subject like this against uh, a ruthless regime like Zanu PF? Mm, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Uh, that's a difficult question. I, I you know, no. I, I think uh, as a documentary filmmaker, um, and um, you know, I, I'll say that in, in in the main reviews of the film, I I've seen no criticism of this being one-sided. Uh, I can see how you can say that because I follow only one part of the campaign. But you know, there are no interviews. There are no manipulation of the events. Um, and. And I will leave that question with the with the viewer about my own safety. Um, I mean, I've 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 there's been situations, of course, while we filmed on the ground in Zimbabwe that was that was uh, 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 you know um, overwhelming as a filmmaker, especially the events on on August first was was pretty dramatic. But uh, I think Zimbabwean uh, young people engaged in Zimbabwean politics are living this life uh, every day, and I'm very aware of my my privilege that that I can I have the privilege to tell this story. And then uh, when things get too hot, I I have a, a European passport and I I can skip back to <laughs> to, to, to my own country. So right. so no, I think I'm in all of uh, you know people like uh, uh, Cecilia and Netzai and Joanna who are fighting the struggle for, 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 for democracy on the ground, in the front line, uh, receiving very, very, very uh, unjust treatment both by the courts and by the, the system it, itself. Um, they get up every day, they keep pushing and, uh, and, um, and I am very humbled by by them and other young Zimbabweans. Some are still in prison, right, as we speak, being political prisoners. The way they keep motivating themselves and keep the struggle going, um, I think, is a real story here. Uh, not my safety, obviously. Wow, wow, wow! You are you are actually very brave. I must say that because uh, I know a lot of uh, journalists. Uh, uh, we have been harassed by the system. Uh, some arrested. Uh, by Emerson Mnangagwa and Robert Mugabe. Uh, anyway, as we round up, uh, Camila, your last words to the people of Zimbabwe, the international community, any words of hope, uh, anything that you want to uh, say about uh, uh, the film that is uh, premiering in New York and Los Angeles this weekend? Um, well, I'd like to say I'm getting a lot of requests from Zimbabweans uh, on WhatsApp and on my Facebook and other places about when the movie will be screened uh, in Zimbabwe itself. And for us, as filmmakers, that's the most important venue for this film to screen. Uh, and it will be released one way or the other. Um, uh, after it's done, sort of the commercial runs, which is uh, the usual route for this kind of film, as I explained, first some festivals and then some theaters, movie theaters. Um, and then after that, uh, either on a streaming platform or through other channels, we might even put it on YouTube if there are no other ways of, of releasing it in, in, in Zimbabwe. But my final words will be just stay tuned and be patient. Um, we are working on it. And, and, uh, and I think uh, sometime in the beginning of the new year, we are ready to, for, for president to also meet its Zimbabwe, Zimbabwean uh, audience. And uh, come what may, we'll, I'm sure there'll be a lot of debate and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it very much. Well, well, thank you very much, uh, Camila, and I also must apologize for going uh, over time, uh, but uh, this has been a very eye-opening and a very productive uh, discussion. Thank you so much uh, for all the information. I think uh, Zimbabweans uh, that are here in the diaspora and in Zimbabwe that have been watching, that have been listening, uh, you have learned a lot. You now know about uh, the president uh, more than you knew uh, a few days ago. And uh, if you are here in the USA, please uh, try to make your way to New York or Los Angeles. Uh, and of course, uh, those uh, who are on this side of the US, uh, uh, the West side, you are going to maybe have a chance to watch it in Dallas, in Atlanta, and uh, other areas. And those in Canada, uh, they are also considering Ontario. And of course, uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, as you heard you're saying, they are going to do everything possible to ensure that uh, you get a chance to watch uh, this award-winning documentary. Uh, to our viewers and listeners uh, across the world uh, on Zim I YouTube, Zim I Facebook, uh, and also on Change Radio, we want to thank you for your valued time. Uh, please uh, 
let's uh, make our way to New York. Thank you so much, uh, Camila. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you, Savanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.